Vincent, they're drunk just now. Very drunk. Uh, but I'm going to be opening up the stuff that they bought me for my birthday. Um, which, as you can see, if I can flip this the right way around, bear with me. Mm. Oh, no, no, I have no idea how to do this. Mm. Let's do this at another point. But it's <laughs> yeah. First, yeah. first Strike after effects. and Death Guard. Um, so I'm going to be opening these up. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to them. Bye! Bye, -bye. Phones in because the microphone's here, which makes it pretty simple to do things. Although it seems to pick up background noise quite well too. And I have already opened these up, so I've had a quick look at that one. Um, just trying to get the card for So I'm going to first strike first. No, first strike is pretty cool so far. Slides open. Box is a decent little size for 25 quid. Now you get various bits and pieces in here. Um, six D6 dice. Just basic little white dice. Um, I can always do some more D6s. I've always got plenty of them. Some ultramarine transfers. Don't know if you can see that well. Not going to get much use out of that. All your various slot bases. Again, basic. No, this is handy and it's a nice little touch. It's a range roller. And it's actually see through plastic. Got the inches on it, and it only goes up to six inches because I think in first strike you only really need that much. Um, but it does have some decal on it. Inquisition symbols, kind of coggy type things going on. The Ultima Segmentum it goes on it. Um, then we get into the kits themselves. Um, now, obviously, you've got both Nurgle and Marines in here, and specifically it is the Primaris Marines, which I actually really like the models for. Um, but the first brew that we've got is the Easy Build Pox Walkers. And I don't know if you can see that one, but it's all this kind of green plastic. It's all push fit. The detailing on them is fantastic for what they are. And they look like they can just get put on the tabletop straight out of the box and look quite good. And then you have the sprue for the three death guard. Which again, this nice death guard green colour scheme. Nice and simple. To the point one pose models. Again, fantastic detail in them. You've then got your first unit of Primaris. If you don't have Primaris already, these are going to be, well, nice to play around with. Because um, they're that bit bigger and that makes them a little bit easier to paint. And I think these guys are called Intercessors. And they come in Ultramarines Blue because, you know, poster boys and all that jazz. They come with the bolt rifles, which are like normal bolters but longer range. And and they're just nice models. I think the only thing that I don't like about them is these little bits on the knee pads, which I think make them look a little bit too much like Stormcast Eternals. And as much as I like both Stormcast Eternals and Marines, I kind of get sick of the comparisons between the two. Oh, sick Marines, you know. It just irritates me. It's just too simplistic. But when you add extra detail into your new models, which just brings them in line with the other models people think already look like them. You're just asking for people to get annoyed at you. And then we have the Primaris models that I actually really like the look of. And these are the Reavers, these are like the ambush specialists. And they come with big freaking combat knives. Yeah. And the 
these skull-faced helmets which I am really liking. Um, I imagine they'll be very useful for chaplain conversions um, but they do very much remind me of Night Lords um, because all the stuff was commissioned by Robotie Gilliman um, yeah I normally want Robert Gilliman but you know I'm Scottish so I pronounce things in whatever fucking way I feel like at any given time uh, but apparently it's Robotie Gilliman um, and I think he's taken all the best aspects of each legion and I think he's going to be using those in separate squads. So he's basically taking all the religion stuff and refining it for this new war front that he's fighting on in the 41st millennium. Guy's been asleep for about 10,000 years, so you know. His plan to take a long time to come to fruition. Uh, they've got the heavy bolt pistols as well. Um, they're pretty cool models. And they push fit keeps the price down. Um, we then get this little bundle here. And I've not opened this yet. It says first strike, read this first. Okay, I guess I might. You know. I'm not used to actually doing what you tell me to do this work out. Fuck it, might as well. Now these were our birthday presents. Um, which is why Nick's and Vincent were here because they arrived in the post today at least about well, 10 days after my birthday now but you know money was tight I have a whole handful of stuff here now I think Game Workshop have learned from the stuff that they did right with Age of Sigmar um, and the Age of Sigmar starters now this was this first it is background the models Mod. Basics of play, advanced rules. That's some missions in there. And it's obviously all using the stuff that you get in the box because they know what you get in the box. So they can balance it for what you're playing with. So that's first strike with this first. Yeah, pretty handy. And you got First Strike Core Rules. And again, it's this basic, small little rule book. You can carry it around with you anywhere you're going and play the game. Now, it's got basics for fighting a battle here, and it's got the only one scenario which is basically your, your pitch battle and it tells you about data sheets it, it's very very basic and I quite like it it's handy good size good quality here you've got your assembly guides to all the models which are in the box that's fine then you get to the data sheets now I love these um, I think you get these in the Age of Sigmar. Main box has something similar to this. Um, and nice artwork on one side of the unit that you're reading. And the data sheet. Everything you need for that unit right there. And your sensors. Guard plate rings and the pox walkers. Now, the thing about the pox walkers is when I first saw them, the paint job I saw them done in um, was very, very pale and came across as very comical and goofy. And I wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, I know some people like nothing to do that for Batman, and, and that's absolutely fine for creating clean ones. Um, um, or your wings and things like that, and that works well. Um, but in general, I like the grim side of things. Uh, not the plague bearers, um, but the 
Poxwalkers seem to have too many horns on them, but they seem to be goofy. And then I was in Games Workshop Edinburgh, and one of the guys there had painted up some Poxwalkers, and he'd done it in a very pale, fleshy colour. And then I think it might have just been a death of mud uh, wash over the top of it just to bring it, darken it down and grind it up. And he'd just done a little bit of blood effect. And it was grim. Properly, properly grim. And I really, really appreciated that. It made me look at the model again and kind of appreciate some of the hidden detail which you don't spot the first time you look at it. So, for example, there are points where you can see maggots writhing under the coat. That's cool. Um, there's one of the box walker models that you look at and you can tell it's a Gene Steeler colourist. Got this carapist arm, the segmented hand. It's wearing the same mining trousers as the Gene Steeler colours. Fantastic. Anyway, back to this box. Um, this is a play map. Now, I haven't looked at this yet, but it was one of the things that kind of I found interesting about this set. Because they're giving you something to play Which they haven't really done before. At least not in my experience. I could get back to the end here and there, but. look like these are just print notes of the Sector Imperial Alice tiles. But that's not a bad thing. This is a cheap, cheap alternative to that. And yes, this will get wasted. Uh, this will, you know, might get ripped, things like that. But this is specifically for First Blood in the mission in First Blood. And the reason why I say that is because on the other side, you have the same information. But you have starting areas. And objectives. Look at it. It's a different design. It's a different sector in pure realist. The other side is obviously for if you're having a more free form game. So there's a really, really good little kit um, for 25 quid. The screws alone are worth 40. And then you've got your little data cards. They're so pretty cool. And oh, yeah, the thing I didn't mention. This is the inside tray that you store everything in, inside the box. Or is it a set of three storage containers to put on your tray? Line of sight, locking tray to put on your playmat. Genius. Maximizing space, and this is something that we've seen from Games Workshop recently. They've done really, really well at just packing all the stuff. It's the play card. Now, you get these three in there anyway. Um, and the reason that I'm quite happy to have this in addition to that is I still have a lot of the plastic um, maroons from uh, not the Trail of Carth, Carth, but of Prosper. Which means I have a lot of blank plain legionnaires to paint up as Death Guard. I've got three bases here. And the way I see it is, I can take those plain troopers, add these three to it, and that makes it a Death Guard unit. I have the Death Guard Green Spring, 
match everything up as a base color. You have a guy here with Power Fist, a plasma gun strapped to his back. The other guy has a blight launcher, and the other guy's just got a boulder. And that's great, that, like, that's a nice little basic kit. I can add it to the unit, suddenly expands the detailing. And this is a little bit cooler that comes with it. Give it a little assembly kit. A little mini paint kit. And a little data sheet. The data sheet is fairly basic. The important thing is that you've got 5 inch movement, you hit in a 3 plus with close combat, you hit in a 3 plus with shooting, strength 4, toughness 5, uh, 1 wound, normal plague marine has 1 attack, the plague champion, the power fist, has 2, uh, leadership 7 or 8 for the champion, and a 3 plus save. It tells you that the unit contains 1 plague champion and 2 plague marines. Gives you information on what all the things you can do are. And then we've got down there, disgustingly resilient. Favourite thing. Used to be feeling a pain. They're called disgustingly resilient. And they've taken a bit of effort um, with the new set to get away from standardised rules. Naming. I mean people still do it they say, oh he's got a, a 6 plus feeble pain or what they started doing with it, Sigmar is calling it a failure, a plus shrug because it's a save, but it's not a save because you can't call it a save because you don't get saves, you get certain things like more wounds, but you get a lot of disgusting resume. I don't know whether I like that. I like the fact that they're all individually named, I like the fact that how that frees you up to all of the mechanics. Rules interactions and things like that. I just really appreciate what they've done with it. Anywho, um, I think I'm done for today. Thanks very much for watching. Um, I've not done anything like this for a while, so I just wanted to give it a go and so I'm going to leave that on because it evens out the light on my face. Um, it's one of those things I don't generally have a lot of energy for a hobby, um, but when I do, I go through phases. Um, that's my cat making noises at me. Um, and those phases mean that I end up um, doing a fair amount of hobby stuff, for me at least. Um, when I have a lot of energy. and quite warm brown hues on it. I'm really having fun painting him, I'm not painting him as well as I used to be able to uh, by any stretch, but I'm trying out different colour tones and different skin tones and I'm having fun. Uh, that's the main thing with hobby, it's your hobby. Um, enjoy it.
but that's enough for me for tonight, so I'm going to wish you guys a good night. <laughs>